The title of this sermon is I have decided to follow Jesus, not turning back, not turning back. The base is Mark 1, 14 to 20. Please, let's pray. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Mark's Gospel says that Simon and Andrew were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen, probably day after day. It was the same thing, the same sea of Galilee, the same net, the same boat. Day after day, it was wind, water, fish, tired bodies. They probably grew up watching their dad and granddad fishing, watching their future life, watching how they too would spend their time. Cast the net, pull it in, cast the net, pull it in. If you are not casting the net, then you sit in the boat mending the net. That's what James and John were doing, casting and mending. Casting and mending, you know about those days. We may not fish for a living, but we know about casting and mending nets, metaphorically speaking. Until the pandemic, for many days, that all seemed the same. One looks like another. Life is a routine. Life on autopilot. Nothing changes. We don't expect much to happen. This is our life. We cast the nets. We mend the nets, casting and mending to make a living, to feed our family, to pay the bills. Casting and mending to gain security and get to retirement. Casting and mending to hold our family together, making our marriage work and growing up our children. Casting and mending to gain the things we want, a house, a car, books, clothes, a vacation, casting and mending to earn a, a reputation, to gain approval, establish status, casting and mending on our way through another day. Casting and mending, routine actions are realities of life. They are also the circumstances in which Jesus comes to us, the context in which we hear the call to a new life, and the place where we are changed and the ordinary become extraordinary. These good be disciples, Simon and Andrew, James and John, are not looking for Jesus. They are too bossy with the nets. It is another day of casting and mending. They may not have even noticed Jesus, but he not only sees them, but Jesus also speaks to them. Jesus has a way of showing up in the ordinary places of life and interrupting the daily routines of casting and mending nets. That's what he did to the lips of Simon and Andrew, James and John. That's what he does to your life and my life. Jesus has a way of showing up in our ordinary places of life and interrupting our daily routines. Follow me, follow me is Jesus' invitation to a new life. If these four fishermen accept the invitation, their lives will forever be different. They will be different. They will no longer catch just fish. They will fish for people. They will fish for, for people. Uh, and he also could just have said to the carpenters, follow me and you will build the kingdom of heaven. To the farmers, 
We have a lot of farmers in Wisconsin. Follow me and you will set the word to the teachers. Also, probably you are a teacher. Follow me and you will open minds and hearts to the presence of God. To parents, follow me and you will nurture new life. When Jesus says, I will make you fish for people, the Lord is describing the transformation of their lives, not merely a job catching new members or followers. Whatever your life is, however you spend your time, Jesus is calling you, follow me, follow me. It's a calling to participate with God in God's own saving work. It's the work of change and grow to be better human beings. Mm -hmm. That work is always um, about moving, moving to a larger vision, orienting our life in a new direction and experiencing that our life story is connected to and a part of a much larger story of life. God's life. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Is it not exciting? As Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Jesus called them. Mark records no discussions, no questions, no goodbyes. They simple, they simply left and follow him. I am afraid that if Mark were writing about me, about Jorge, when he gets to the story when Jesus says, follow me, Mark would write, and immediately the questions of Jorge follow. Where are we going? What we'll do? How long will we be gone? What do I need to take? Where will we stay? Can I take my wife, Winky, my dog, and Rosita, my cat, with me? But this conversation does not take place in today's gospel. Jesus does not offer a map. No, Jesus does not offer a map, an itinerary, a schedule. I know people to love, I love schedules. But Jesus is not offering an a schedule, a map, an itinerary, or a destination. Only an invitation to follow him, to follow Jesus. Yes, yes, Jesus. Jesus is just offering you and me an invitation, not a map, not a schedule, not an itinerary. This is not the type of journey you can prepare for. This is the journey towards the place where God resides. It's not about planning and organizing, making lists, or packing supplies, packing supplies. No, it's not that easy. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy. If anything, this journey is about leaving, leaving things behind you. I repeat, if anything, this journey is leaving, leaving things behind you. Listen to what Mark says. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. They left their father Zebedee in the boat and followed him. Yes, in the first the story was about Simon and Andrew and the second about James. Yes, and uh, the, the, the sons of Zebedee. Jesus' invitation, follow me, is also the invitation to leave behind. To leave behind our nets, our boats. It's very hard to say. But our fathers and mothers, our sons and daughters, 
our comforts and securities. That's the hard part for most of us. We are pretty good of accumulating. Yes, we are pretty good at accumulating and clinging about not so good at letting go. Yes, yes, our spiritual growth involves some kind of letting go. I repeat, I repeat, our spiritual growth involves some kind of letting go. We never get anywhere new as long as we are unwilling to live where we are. We accept Jesus' invitation to follow. No by packing up, no, but by letting go. I repeat, we accept Jesus' invitation to follow, not by packing up, but by letting go, by letting go, by letting go behind you. Jesus is always, is telling us to follow me, you always have to travel light. To follow me, you always have to travel light. Don't live accumulating things. Don't live accumulating things. Every time my wife and I move from home, I realize that I am a person who tends to accumulate things. Things that I think this broke lamp, this flat tire still works and someday I will repair it. Still, the truth is that I never do it and it becomes junk, garbage, something that gets in the way and hinders me and it even makes me stumble. Many times we accumulate bad experiences, bad memories, resentments. Do you have resentment in your heart? 